Front and center at tomorrow's highly anticipated primetime hearing will be Donald Trump's apparent refusal to stop his supporters from storming the Capitol. But according to The Washington Post, the committee has damning evidence of the former president's actions the day after the riot. Tonight, the paper reports the House committee expects to show portions of outtakes from a Trump speech that was delivered on January 7th. That day, aides had urged him to speak to the nation and clearly condemn the riot. And he struggled to do so. The video Trump tweeted on the 6th when he told supporters to go home and that he loved them will also be part of the hearing. Earlier this evening, committee member Jamie Raskin was asked about it. Hours had passed when he could have simply taken a walk uh, for 10 or 15 seconds over to address the country and address his followers and tell them to go home. And people were beseeching him, begging him to do that. And he refused to do that. So then he finally went over and made some comments at the end of the day when it was clear that, no thanks to the president, um, our police forces had turned the tide. It's uh, extremely revealing mm. how exactly he went about making those statements. And we're going to let everybody see parts of that. Tomorrow's hearing begins at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can absolutely see it here on MSNBC. Chairman Benny Thompson, who has tested positive for COVID, will lead the hearing, but will be doing it virtually. We expect to hear from former Trump White House officials, Matthew Pottinger and Sarah Matthews. Both were in the executive mansion during the insurrection. And one committee staffer says we will hear much more about Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows. These hearings have raised questions also about the Justice Department's investigation into the efforts to overturn the election and what Attorney General Merrick Garland might do regarding Donald Trump himself. Today, Garland insisted that the DOJ does not do investigations in public, but he also added this. No person is above the law in this country. I can't say it any more clearly than that. There is nothing in the principles of prosecution in any other factors which prevent us from investigating anyone, anyone who's criminally responsible uh, for, for a, 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 an attempt to undo a democratic election. And then there's this monster story. As the committee prepares for tomorrow's hearing, there is still growing controversy over those missing Secret Service text messages. In the Washington Post tonight reporting, the Homeland Security watchdog learned back in February that the Secret Service had purged nearly all cell phone texts from around the time of the January 6th attack, but they chose not to tell Congress. And today, NBC News heard from a senior official who says agency employees had been sent three separate emails, at least one before January 6th, reminding them to keep records in their cell phones, including text messages. So far, the Secret Service is said to have turned over one single text message conversation. Today, in a statement, the committee chair and vice chair suggested the agency may have broken the law when those texts were deleted. There's also news of about two of Trump's most vocal supporters as, of his election lies. A judge has ordered Rudy Giuliani himself to testify before the Georgia grand jury that is investigating Trump for possible election interference. Giuliani was subpoenaed last month. He will now have to testify on August 9th. And the government has rested its case in the contempt trial of Steve Bannon. The defense is expected to begin making its case tomorrow. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bull****. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be a part of it. And that's one of the reasons that went into me deciding to leave when I did. Despite that, from his former attorney general, Trump and his allies are still pushing those 2020 election lies. A new report released by a group of prominent conservatives has now reviewed every single election fraud raised in six crucial swing states. And here's what they found. Quote, absolutely no evidence of fraud in the 2020 presidential election on the magnitude necessary to shift the result in any state, let alone the nation as a whole.
We welcome one of the co-authors of that report, David Hoppe. He has a wealth of experience on Capitol Hill and was once chief of staff for then-Speaker Paul Ryan. David, we knew there was no widespread voter fraud. You saw it right there. Trump's former attorney general confirmed it. Can this report convince anyone who's still insisting otherwise? Because there's no sign of him stopping the big lie. Just yesterday, we found out this month, he urged the Wisconsin Assembly Speaker to overturn Biden's win in 2020. Well, what we looked at, as you said, is all 64 cases that were brought by the Trump campaign. And in none of those were they successful. They had one success, and that was not of a Pennsylvania case. And it did not concern enough votes to even come close to turning around things in Pennsylvania. So we have a process. And if people have concerns about the vote, they have a way to take them to court to get the court decisions. But we looked at all the court decisions and we looked at all the studies in many of the six key states that were done by the legislatures or other groups. But David. And the conclusion that there was not anything that would have turned over the election, that the electors that Joe Biden won were sufficient for him to be elected president, and he was legitimately elected president. We are hoping that people will look at this report and go see the depth we went to to try and go on a deep dive and everything to show that there just, there were, that's not to say there weren't places that things went wrong here and there. That happens in almost every election. But there was but nothing- David, that's things, not what I'm asking. There was nothing proven by the Trump people to say that they actually could turn over any state. They just didn't have the evidence. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking- who is listening? Do you believe this report is going to change the minds of those who are pushing the big lie or influential Republicans well, who know it's a lie and have been silent about it? You have to start by talking to people uh, and, and where you come from. And uh, all of the people who are the authors of this report are conservative Republicans who have served in Republican administrations, uh, been Republicans. And is it going to happen in a day or two days or a week or a month? That people are going to start to look at this? Probably not. But over time, we're hoping that because this is a report that can be easily digested by people who are non-lawyers like me, we think that this is a report that will build over time the opportunity for people to take a deep dive and say, what happened? Was there a fair election? And was it true that, uh, that Vice President Biden was elected president of the United States? It's going to take some time, but we continue to work on it. We continue to talk to conservative groups to continue to talk to conservative publications, conservative radio people, conservative TV stations. We are trying to do this in a responsible way to get the information out to conservatives who are concerned, um, who, who believe that there might have, you know, I, I, for most of December uh, of 2020, as I looked at things, I wasn't sure that the election hadn't been uh, there weren't things so wrong in the election that the, the results weren't right. But as I looked at it more and more, and as I came and to work with this later on, we looked at all the cases, and there just isn't the evidence anywhere that President Trump wa had enough votes to be elected in any of these states. I believe you. I believe this report. Have you spoken to your former boss, Paul Ryan, about this? I know he has urged Republicans to look at other candidates other than Donald Trump, but... He's also on the board of Fox. You could show this report to Paul Ryan. There's a good chance Fox News <laughs> um, isn't even going to I air have, uh, the hearing tomorrow night. He has I, an awful lot of influence I over told people him, who yeah. suck down conservative media, media night after night. He, uh, I have talked to him about the report, and he has seen the report. I delivered a copy to him so that he could look at it. Um, we've had people, one of the first interviews we had, frankly, was on uh, on a Fox um, special report. Uh, and so we have done that in, with other conservative groups as well. And we will continue to do that because our audience is, as you point out, primarily conservatives who are still concerned about this election. We want to show them that what we did, the evidence we gathered, the thorough way we went through it, to prove, and we didn't go into this with a preconceived idea of what this, uh, whether it was right or wrong. We went in saying, what does the evidence show? And the evidence showed, in our opinion, overwhelmingly, without a shadow of a doubt, 
that Joe Biden won the presidential election in 2020. He had the most elector, one of the most states had the most electors and was legitimately and fairly elected president of the United States in the 2020 election. It's a really important report. I really appreciate you doing this work. It is not about supporting Joe Biden. It's about supporting democracy and free and fair elections. And that's exactly what you're doing. And I appreciate it. A Russian plane dropped a bomb on the house where uh, the family of Andre spent the night. He was there together with his parents and his sister, Anya. How many children like him are there in Ukraine? How many families like this may still be destroyed by the war? Those are Russia's hunger games, hunting for peaceful people in peaceful cities of Ukraine. The last thing before we go tonight, Russia's Hunger Games. Ukrainian First Lady Olena Zelenska delivered remarks to Congress earlier today and pleaded for more help to fight Russia. Ukraine has accused Russia of attacking civilians on purpose, most notably after an attack on a city in central Ukraine just last week. This startling surveillance camera footage provided by the Ukrainian government shows the moment a Russian missile struck an area full of civilians far, far from the front line of fighting. According to Ukrainian authorities, the strike killed at least 23 people and wounded more than 100. Today, Zelenska called out Russia for targeting civilians during her address to Congress. She showed pictures and video of Ukrainians, including children like the one you saw a moment ago, who have died or been injured in the war. She asked for more help and weapons to put an end to this conflict. While Russia kills, America saves. And you should know about it. We thank you for that. But unfortunately, the war is not over. The terror continues. I'm asking for something uh, now I would never want to ask. I am asking for weapons. Weapons that would not be used to wage a war on somebody else's land but to protect one's home and the right to wake up alive in that home. She also spoke to our own Peter Alexander about how this war has affected her as a person and as a mother. What does your son dream of? What does he want to be? Obviously, he wants to be a soldier. He wants to be a soldier. Obviously. That's what all Ukrainian boys must dream of now. I think, yes. What does that make you think as a mom? You know, before the war, my son used to go to the folk dance ensemble. He played piano, he learned English, he, of course, attended sports club. And now I cannot bring him back to doing arts and humanities. Everything, on, then only thing he wants to do is martial arts and how to use a rifle. And that's what I really want um, to ensure, is that the childhood of my son is given back to him and that he enjoys his life to the fullest. Just like any mother or father, she just wants her little boy to enjoy his life to the fullest.